Hello and welcome to the Washington News Show. I'm Allie Bell. And I'm Haley Shord. We're so glad you're here with us today. We have a lot to fill you in on. We're less than a month away from the end of the year. So only a few new shows left for the year. Now April always means some interesting spring weather hits us right before finals. Let's take a look now at the forecast. Kaylin Clay has our Washita Weather Watch. Hey everyone, it's Kaylin Clay and I have your Washita Weather Watch for the week. Now we're looking at a fairly warm week with a cool end to it. Not much sunshine though, and a little bit of rain over the weekend and the humidity is high throughout the week. The south at its finest. Now let's jump in and take a look at today. It is mostly cloudy and everyone's favorite, humidity. We have a 30% chance of rain and 90% cloud coverage, so kind of a dreary day. We have a high of 84 degrees and a low of 66 degrees. Now it does look to be a clear night, so that's great. Now let's take a look at Saturday. This is the day that we're expecting that rain, 100% chance of rain. It will be a cooler day with a high of 60 degrees and a low of 51. There is a chance of thunderstorms and a chance of flooding, so watch those roads this weekend and that rain will continue into the evening and we'll see a low of 51 at night to cool it off a bit. Now taking a step back and looking at the rest of the week, tomorrow will be another humid day with the possibility of a thunderstorm in the afternoon, a high of 82 degrees and a low of 61. And on Friday morning, we may see some showers in the morning, but it will clear up and be a mostly cloudy day after that with a high of 67 degrees and a low of 55. Now moving past that rain on Saturday, on Sunday, it will clear up with a high of 69 and a low of 48. More sun and clouds on that day. Still partly cloudy, but still a little bit of sun. And then on Monday, it will be a sunny day finally. Highs are back up and 71 degrees for that spring weather. So stay dry this week and stay strong because the sun is coming back out as we push closer to summer. That's all I have for you today. Predictions are by AccuWeather. Back to the desk. Well, hopefully that rain holds off this weekend and maybe we'll see some spring sun instead. Thanks, Kaylin. In Washita News this week, students were honored for their outstanding work in the community at the Elrod Center Community Service Awards Banquet. Tuesday night, the Elrod Center recognized leaders of projects and their graduating seniors that have spent their time working with some of the programs like ElderServe and after-school tutoring. The Elrod Center is Washita's hub for community service. If you'd like to get involved next year, visit obu.edu backslash Elrod for more information. Next week, Scholars Day. The outstanding academic achievements of students this year are set to be highlighted and students who have conducted outstanding research will present their studies, as well as new members to be inducted to Alpha Chi Honor Society. Alpha Chi inducts juniors and seniors whose GPAs rank in the top 10% of their respective classes. In light of their outstanding academic achievements over the weekend, Washita History Department had the honor of welcoming seven schools from two states on our campus as they hosted the Phi Alpha Theta Regional History Conference. And that's not the only conference Washita had. Honoring and hosting Arkansas College Media Association Conference was on our campus this past Friday. Speakers hosted various breakout sessions and awards were given at the end of the day to students and staff who submitted outstanding work. Washita took home numerous awards and Madeline Colzer has a story. Madeline? The Walker Conference Center is abuzz with the laughter of college students working in media. The Arkansas College Media Association hosted their annual conference on Washita's campus this past week. Students from all around Arkansas came to visit the ACMA conference to attend sessions and receive awards. Sessions range from digital marketing, AI, all the way to reporting for television. After the sessions ended, the room was electric with the excitement of the award ceremony. Washita itself won quite a few awards. Uh I'm just so blessed to be with these two right here and just our amazing program at OSDN. It's been amazing to see how far this program has come since it started in 2019. From really just a startup out of our department to now winning back-to-back -back awards for the best TV outlet in the state, I mean, that means the world and especially this one right here. I remember at the beginning of this year, I actually finished in second place last year in the Reporter of the Year category. And as I was starting out my senior year, I actually wrote three words on a flashcard and it said, leave no doubt. I wanted to leave no doubt that I had given it my all in my last year, not only to myself, but to the stories and to my community that I had given everything I had. So when I graduated that I knew I'd given my best effort and really this just feels like a full circle moment. I, 
it, it's a blessing that is beyond the description of words. Coming in, I knew I had some big shoes to fill after um, one of our other producers graduated last year. And so just the fact that I could go back to back wins and continue on our good program means a lot to me, especially like coming in not knowing what I wanted to do. And like now that I'm in the role that I'm in, I'm in, it feels great. Well, this is just a testament to all the hard work our program has, has done this year. I mean, uh, the, the, whether it's podcast, whether it's Chase being reporter of the year, uh, and all of us, of course, winning the award for uh, best television network in the state. It's just a testament to the hard work of this program. And there's a little sneak peek into the Arkansas College Media Association Awards and Conference. This is Madeline Colzer with Washtenaw News. Thanks, Madeline. A lot is happening around Arkadelphia lately, and if you need something to do in the final weeks of the semester, the city has you covered. Arbor Day is coming up on Friday, April 26th. Arbor Day is the day of honoring the climate by encouraging people to plant trees. And in Arkadelphia, free seeds will be given out at the Natural Resources Conservation Services Office at 640 South 6th Street from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to honor the holiday. Now, Cinco de Mayo is coming up, and this year, Arkadelphia is observing the holiday the day before, May 4th, with a May 4th fiesta from 5 to 9 p.m. in the Town Square lot. You can enjoy live music, food trucks, a line dancing class, performances from Arkansas Circus Arts, a temporary tattoo station, and more. In other news, if you've ever driven down Pine Street, you probably noticed the chunk of bricks taken out of the historic Arby's building. Last Thursday, the restaurant faced damages when a motorist struck the north corner of the building. And another thing to watch out for, crawfish season is upon us. And if you're a crawfish fan and invasive species, the giant apple snails has been found in shipments of live crawfish from Louisiana. These snails are considered a pest to rice crops and the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is asking for the public's help in spotting these properly disposing of those snails if they are found by double bagging them in the garbage. Now switching gears, let's take a look at our athletes with Brody Kriegel. Here's the Roar Rundown. Thank you, Haley, and welcome to this week's Roar Rundown. I'm Brody Kriegel. While this semester is coming close to an end, so is the regular season for just about every Tiger sports team. Tiger Baseball won their series against the Bisons of Oklahoma Baptist University after a doubleheader sweep last Friday. A series sweep fell short after a high-scoring thriller ended with OKBU on top 14-13. G. Allen hit three home runs and Dustin Bermudez hit two in the double-digit effort as Allen finished Saturday's game 4-5 for five at the plate with four RBI. It was his first four-hit game of the season and his first career game with three home runs. The senior from Little Rock had been on an eight-game homerless drought prior to the game. He now has 36 home runs in his career, just three away from the school's all-time record. Bermudez went four for six with four RBI. It was his second four-hit game of the season and fourth game with two home runs. The senior from Chandler, Arizona now sits at 30 career home runs, just the third Tiger to ever hit at least 30. Saturday's game mirrored both of Friday's games with a back and forth high scoring affair. Both teams ended up with 15 hits. There were a combined 12 extra base hits between the two teams. The Tigers are back in action next weekend at home in a three game GAC series against Southern Nazarene. Washita softball dropped a Saturday doubleheader to first place Oklahoma Baptist at Langston Field. The first game of the day saw the first place Bison jump out to a commanding lead with a seven run first inning. The Tigers were able to scratch a run in the second with Caitlin Province scoring from third as Jordan Merritt forced the throw by stealing second base. OKBU added runs in the fifth and sixth innings before the Tigers scored their second run of the day in similar fashion to the first. Remington Adams got the Bison catcher to attempt to throw her out at second to allow Mackenzie Amaya to steal home at the same time. The Bison tacked on a final run in the seventh inning, and the Tigers fell 10-2. Lauren Lester and Aaron Williams were the two Tigers who record hits in the loss. Cody Batchelor pitched six innings in relief of the starter Hannah Hunter and struck out two. The Tigers will look to get back on track next weekend when they travel to take on the second-place Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene University in a three-game GAC series starting Friday, April 19th at 3 p.m. in Bethany, Oklahoma. A 37-year-old record fell as the Washita men's track and field team had a successful weekend between the Laverne Leopard Distance Carnival and the SFA Carl Kite Invitational. 
Two Tigers made a trip out west to compete in the L.A. Vern University Leopard Distance Carnival on Friday, and this is where the 37-year-old record came down. The Distance Carnival was full of athletes from all divisions, including many from Division I. Whit Lawrence ran the 10,000 meter with a time of 31.06.86, breaking the record set by assistant coach Pat Ponder in 1987 by 15 seconds to finish 18th in the event. Kate Swindle also made the trip to California and ran in the 10K with a time of 31.52.70 and placed in the top 30 with the majority of the Tiger track team going to South Texas to compete in the Carl Kite Invitational hosted by Stephen F. Austin University, where another record was broken and 10 top 10 finishes were posted. No team scores were recorded, but the Tigers competed well against competition from Division I and top Division II opponents. Josh Tibbs set a new school record in the 3,000 meter steeplechase with a time of 9.32.86 to place fifth in the event and break his own record from last season by almost five seconds. The Tigers will be back in action next weekend at the Arkansas State Alumni Classic starting Friday, April 19th in Jonesboro, Arkansas. The Washita women's track and field team saw its first NCAA professional time of the season and five school records broken across three meets this weekend in California and Texas. Six Tigers made the trip out west to California to take part in two meets, the Leopard Distance Carnival and the Brian Clay Invitational. Two Tigers went to Laverne University to take part in the Leopard Distance Carnival against Division I and top Division II programs. Caitlin Natigal hit the Tigers' first NCAA provisional mark of the season with a new school record time of 10.59.19 in the 3,000 meter steeplechase posting a 10th place finish behind D1 and top D2 runners. Natigal's provisional time ranks first overall in the Great American Conference this season. Macy Cash competed in the 3,000 meter steeple chase as well, taking 13th place with a time of 11.03.52. Four Tigers, Izzy Bro, Mackenzie Davis, Allie Hilkema, and Taylor Keith competed in the Brian Clay Invitational hosted by Azusa Pacific University, where two school records were broken. Bro set a new school record in the 1500 meter with a time of 4.38.70, breaking her own record set earlier this season. Bro's time of 4.38.70 ranks as the fastest of the season in the GAC. Davis was the second Tiger to break a record in Azusa, setting a new 5000 meter record with a time of 17.28.06 with a top 20 finish. The junior broke her own record by 12 seconds. The majority of the Tiger track team went south to Texas to compete in the Carl Kite Invitational hosted by Stephen F. Austin University, where another two records were broken and 10 top 10 finishes were posted. No team scores were recorded, but the Tigers competed well against competition from Division I and top Division II opponents. Anna Woolsey set a school record in the 400 meter with a time of 56.08, placing fifth in the race and breaking her previous record by almost two seconds. Laney White set a new record in the heptathlon with a score of 4,009 points, placing the seventh in the event and breaking the previous record set last season by over 500 points. White also placed 10th in the 400 meter hurdles with a time of 106.92. The Tigers will be back in action next weekend at the Arkansas State Alumni Classic starting Friday, April 19th in Jonesboro, Arkansas. If you want to keep up with the Tigers and the latest in Washtaw sports, Visit obutigers.com and tune in to the Washtaw Sports Digital Network. That's all for this week's Royal Rundown. I'm Brody Creel. Back to you, Allie. All right, thanks, Brody. Don't forget to show your support for student athletes, especially at the end of the semester when their time is wrapping up for the seniors. And coming up this week is the Spring Musical. Yes, that's right, Allie. Show your support for the music and theater departments by getting tickets to Anastasia. The shows are April 18th through the 20th at 7.30 p.m. in Jones Performing Arts Center. And on Sunday, April 21st at 2.30 p.m., you can get tickets on obu.edu backslash box office. Well, that brings us to our question of the week. With the semester wrapping up, we ask you all, what is one goal you want to achieve before this year is up? And we are sharing some of those social media responses here on the show. Emily Blair said she wants to finish writing her book of poetry. Addie Chumley said she would like to sleep for more than four hours one night. Mm -hmm, heard that. Annabeth Burroughs said she would like to accomplish a handstand. And Andy Fletcher said she would just like to pass OBM. <laughs> what about you, Haley? You know, I think about this all the time, actually. Mm -hmm. I have not seen a dog in ages. I would love to just pet a dog. Wolf of is coming out. Oh, I may do that. That's what a about good you? one. Well, as a freshman, I'm going to get to participate in my first tiger track. Hey, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. The mud race. The 
Was it tug of war? Oh no, all the things, all of the things. You'll never forget. Wash the clothes right after too. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for you today. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Washita News Show and answer each question of the week. You just might see your responses pop up on our show. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Washita News Show, so you never miss out on the latest and greatest Washita news. We'll see you next week.